Hello, welcome to today's stream. Uh, my name is Oscar and I work in the developer relations team uh, here at Snap. Uh, I'm joining live from Paris. Uh, please put in the comment section below where you're coming from too. I know we have a lot of countries joining these workshops and it's really, really great to, to see that, moment, that momentum. Um, today, we will cover the topics of physics and with me, I have the incredible uh, engineer Yao. Uh, so Yao, please introduce yourself and uh, tell us an introduction of your project. Hi everyone, so nice to meet you. Uh, for those who don't know me yet, I'm Yao, I'm AR engineer at Snap. I've been working on the templates, assets, and some advanced prototypes. Today I'm going to show you the latest features in Lens Studio. Don't worry if you never use uh, physics in Lens Studio before. I will just, we'll just have some fun and start from scratch. Awesome, thank you. Thank you Yao for this uh, intro. Uh, so as a reminder, this is part of the Lensathon. We have a series of workshops uh, to support, uh, to give you ideas, to give you uh, new ideas on how you could uh, create your lenses for this exciting uh, Lensathon happening right now. Uh, we're going to put the link in the description uh, so you can check it out. There's $200,000 of prizes to win for 30 winners. And it's pretty open. We're very excited to, to see what you're going to come up with. So feel free to, feel free to register uh, and send your project. Uh, so yeah, Yao, please uh, go forward and I will also, everyone, please feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, I'm here to monitor this because Yao is going to be very focused. So uh, ask your questions and I will uh, try to interrupt her at the best time possible while she's explaining to make sure uh, we can uh, reply any of your questions. And at the very end of the stream also, we will have a Q&A section. So uh, if some of the, if we didn't have time to cover uh, your question, we will do at the very end. So it's, please go, Yao. Okay. So what are we going to cover today? So today we can't cover everything about physics because we just have so many features, but we can definitely show you how physics can make your lens more fun, interactive and advanced. And today I'm going to show you some of the basic uh, features like collider, body, and world mesh collider, image marker, and height bending, hand physics, and full body physics. And if you want to learn more about physics, uh, please feel free to go to the documentation website where you can learn all the details and check each component about physics like uh, assets and uh, how to use force and recast those kind of stuff and yeah as Oscar said feel free to ask any questions during live stream I will try to answer them and Oscar definitely let me know anytime so we added the physics engine since version 4.10 and last year we released physics version 3 as we continue to improve the physics uh, feature based on everyone's feedback. Now you can see physics is being used by our community. There are so many amazing lenses and from our community. And using face side camera and also world side camera with various verticals including the interactive AR effects, game, utility, fashion, and so on. It's just amazing to see everyone's work again. And we also have six templates as learning resources for physics. For the first one, we have like a basic physics template. So this is for physics version 3, and it has so many examples in that and can show you how to use each component and each feature. If you never use any physics engine before or any uh, in any game engine, feel free to start with this template. You can learn from the basics. And if you want to learn more uh, some advanced features, you can dive into the physics toys template where it has two examples where you can uh, learn some uh, basic uh, game and toys effects from the template. And the next three are actually from our community. Uh, it's, those are the SL lens. The first one, built by Maha, Click Coins. It's like a game-related template. Uh, if you want to like build your own game with physics and actually don't write too many code with behavior script, you can dive into this template. And the next one is built by Kevin and it's uh, targeting to the uh, specific physics feature. It's called the breakable. You can uh, make a collision event happen and then make a physical object break into pieces. And the next one is built by Naomi. 
and it shows you how to use a uh, rigged uh, plants with the physics system and with all the chain effects. It's super fun to play with and you can even use your hand to touch all the plants. And the last one is the earring trial template. This is the latest feature uh, in the studio where you can attach a little chain effect and bind a little earring around your head. And you can swing your head to see the real uh, effect of um, physics si simulation. We also have six uh, assets in the asset library uh, where you can find all those helper scripts and just drag and import those assets into your own project. For example, the draggable. If you import the draggable helper script into your uh, project, you can just basically interact with any uh, physics uh, bodies and drag them around. We also have wind zone where you can add a wind force, um, apply wind force around your physics object. And the next three are physics body related stuff where you can have your head physics collider, hand collider and a full body collider. And you can just kick and heat stuff around uh, with, and collide with other physics objects. And the last one is the breakable chick where you can use a little arrow to shoot at the, the chick and then break them into pieces. And what are we going to build today? So today I will use this little octopuses as an example to show how different physics components are and how to add some basic inter, uh, interactions to them. I know they are pretty cute and we'll see a bunch of them and the octopus will take you over the world. Okay, let's move to the studio. So I mentioned we have six assets in the asset library, but today I just released a new one where you can find it in asset library and just import it into your project. It's the octopuses with physics. Okay, now the asset is in, inside the resources panel. Let's drag it into the objects panel. Now we see four different octopuses in the uh, preview panel. So here is the preview panel. And let's also add a device tracking to the camera and make it into the world tracking mode. And then you can just move around, get closer to the octopus. You can see four of them. Cool. And I built this model with Blender and it's pretty easy. It's just a mesh and rig with several bones for each tech tentacles and uh, have this little animation here it's just just trying to say hi yeah so it's pretty simple and easy and you can have your own model later if you want to dive more dive more into this uh, project i mean even though you can make a lot of advanced animations in blender and move it around doing crazy stuff but how to make it more realistic and fun and dynamic. So today I'm going to show you the beauty of the physics engine. So here we have four different octopus. So the first one is, as you can see, it's just a render mesh visual. And here we also have a physics collider component. So what is a physics collider? So with the physics collider, the digital objects won't actually go through it. Let's click this sh show collider checkbox. We can then see the collider wrap around uh, this octopus. And let's also find some spheres in the asset library. So we can make it up more objects. Let's find the object layout. I said I import that into our project. Drag it uh, as a child of the octopus and reset transform so we can see them. Now they are pretty big. I'm just going to increase the count and make them smaller and then make it above the octopus. And we are also going to adjust the size of the sphere. Here, let's say point two. Reset preview panel. 
okay, now they looking pretty good. We have a bunch of spheres. And how can we add like a physics movement to it? We can just add a physics body here. Now you can already see it's falling down and collide with our little octopus. And what is a physical body? So it also includes the physics collider, as you can see from here. So you can see the collider around the physics body, uh, but as well, it can simulate the physics uh, movement based on the physics uh, wor world settings. So now here we have gravity, and that's why it's falling down to the ground. We can also add a physics matter here in the resources panel. So with physics matters, you can actually adjust the bounceness and friction of all the physics uh, objects when they collide with each other. So for example, here, I'm going to just apply the physics methods into the world and just reset it. Now we can see the ball actually bouncing around. I'm also going to change the uh, ship type from box to sphere. So now we can see sphere uh, physics bodies around the, uh, the actual sphere rush, uh, render mesh visual. Let's also try to disable the physics collider and to see the difference. Now we can see the physics sphere actually go through the uh, little octopus and that's how physics collider works. Okay, enough for the first one, let's move to the second one. So for the second octopus, uh, besides render mesh visual, we also have the bones and the little animation here. And it's trying to say hi to you. And if we click uh, show collider for this uh, render mesh visual, we can see uh, the render mesh, uh, the physics collider is actually deformed with the animation. So we can see a nice uh, high for the mesh visual, uh, the physics collider. So this is like uh, something new we added for physics grid. We really cannot do that before, but now we have this new feature. So now you can add any animations and attach physics collider onto your object and then make it collide with the uh, different physics objects here. Let's just drag this spheres here and reset the transform. You can see it's also colliding with the second one. And sometimes you see this like tunneling issue where the boss is actually inside the body. So sometimes, so this is something we don't want to happen. So how can we fix it? Fix it? So inside the world setting, here we have the simulation rate and we can put it higher. And this is actually uh, a balance between the performance and the simulation rate. So the higher it can be, the more accurate the uh, collision calculation and movement calculation will be. But it will definitely cause more performance. So it's really about the balance your uh, visuals with the performance. And if we reset that, we can see the simulation is better and there was no turning effect anymore. So whenever you run into this issue, feel free to go to the world setting and adjust the simulation rate to make uh, the visual effect better. Ooh, that's the second one and let's move to the next one. So for the next one, this little octopus is actually a little bit different. It's not a uh, physics collider anymore. If we uh, enable the debug mode here, we can see it's actually a convex body. So it's actually a physics body instead of a, a physics collider. So uh, it's as you can see, it's less accurate. It doesn't really wrap around with the uh, octopus. And we if we disable the convex, we can see it's go back to the more accurate uh, body shape. And why is this happening? So this is also for performance issue. Uh, if we have like this more accurate body uh, colliders and try to calculate it, the calculate the collision and the simulate 
the movement for physics will be just too much for the body. So we make it into a more simple shape, and it's actually empty shell, and、uh, to for better performance. And why it doesn't really move at all? Because we have this little constraint here. If I disable that, you can see it's falling down to the floor, just as other、uh, spheres. And to interact with that, let's also go to the SLAB brave and the draggable script, as I mentioned. And import that into our project. Drag it into the object panel, and here we can see this little little duck here. You can just drag it around. Let's disable the duck. And make it work with our little octopus. So here it's pretty easy to make it work with octopus. So、uh, instead of、uh, drag other objects, let's just、uh, allow all. So we can just drag the octopus here. But the body is still constrained、uh, by this constraint. So, if you want to add a new constraint to your physics body, you can just click here, add a constraint object to that. Then the body will be constrained by this、uh, constraint component. Where now we are using like、uh, the point constraint, but you can also change it to hinge or fixed. So let's also move the、uh, object layout. To our second octopus, if I got direction right, as a child and reset. Okay, move it out. Cool. Now we have the spheres collide with our new physics body. And what if we want to do something like fun? Like if the ball hits the octopus and then it hits so heavy, so we break the constraint. So here we can actually use something called a behavior script. Let's just add a new behavior script here. So for all the behavior script, we have a trigger event. We also have a response. For the trigger event, we want to make it into a collider event, and、uh, we want to put our octopus body here. And whenever something hit on collider enter, we just disable the constraint. So this is enabled. Let's set it to disabled and reset. So when the ball hits the octopus, it hits so heavy, so it break the constraint and the octopus start to fall on the the floor. So with behavior script, you can find a bunch of like basic simple physics trigger here, and you can、uh, add some simple effect to that. So it's pretty easy to add new stuff. Let's just disable the first react part so we can focus on the last one. So the last one is a little bit special here. I'm just gonna drag it around so you can see the effect. So you can see this octopus is more like a rubber like toy, where you can just drag it around. It's pretty fun to see it, and also let's see we remove the gravity here. You can see the little octopus is like doing this kind of cute animation here. And how are we building this little one? So why is this different from the other ones? So here we are using a chain effect to build this、uh, with some primitive physics bodies. If I click on Show Constraint and Show Collider for the first one and the second one, it's also enable that for the head. And 
disable the render mesh visual so we can see the details. So here we can see all the tentacles are actually attached to the head. If I drag it around and it's bending uh, each tentacles with the head through a hinge constraint. So you can, uh, that's why it works like that. So you can drag it around and you can see the mesh is deforming with that. Okay, let's disable those stuff. You can also use this script uh, as, as your own uh, to your own uh, like uh, 3D models. And this script is actually from the ear bending uh, try on template. So if you go there, you can see all the ear range. We have this little nice chain effect and it's using the same uh, stuff. So now for each joints, we only have two bones because we have a super simple model here, but you can definitely add more bones to your own project. So it can have like a long tentacles, those kind of stuff. And for the object here, we also have a physics body. And let's show Clider here. So as you can see, we can even have this like uh, physics bodies attached to our uh, octopus and the mesh is changing with the uh, transform of the body. So with this kind of effect, the body is actually intangible. And this is super, super helpful when other objects collide with this uh, this body, we can have some overlay uh, effect. So we have collision effect, we also have the uh, overlay effect. So any other objects collide or go through this uh, bodies, we can trigger some other effect. So here, let's try to do something new, like add another behavior script here. And instead of using the collider event, let's put Raycast here. So this is some another feature that we have for our physics engine is the raycasting. You can basically cast a ray to any object uh, to get some uh, basic information like where the point is and uh, like uh, the normal of the object, those kind of stuff. So here we're gonna just attach the camera here and Let's disable the intangible and filter the object. Let's only add our obstacle's head here. So let's see, we want to print a message. So whenever I click on the head of the obstacle, it should print like a high in the logger here. So you can see it here. So. Uh, and what if our octopus are like super shy and we just click it and make it a transparent? Let's just add a super quick twin effect here. And also add a twin effect in our objects panel. So for this is another super big helper script in Lens Studio where you can do some simple animations. Oh, it's still importing. Let's just give it one more second. So I just adding yes. one thought. Yeah, we at the moment there's no question, but please everyone, don't be shy. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I know you're listening, uh, but you know you can ask any questions. So just reminder. You know, uh, no problem. It's uh, this is workshop is for you. And yeah, I feel free to I, ask me. I think everyone loves your octopus, and I can't believe we're actually giving it away in the template. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Learning resources. I mean, you can definitely build your own 3D models, right? So like uh, make it interactive like this and it will be super fun. Now we only have an octopus. I'd love to see your own uh, models and interactive stuff here. Yeah. Uh, so here we have the twin manager and with twins, you can do all those kind of animations. Let's just remove this example and add our animation to the twin where, yeah, we want to make it transparent. 
Let's disable the show collider so it's more clear. So here we have, we can add a new script and add a twin color. So we can make it transparent. And we want to attach our object here and say ping pong color. So this will be our twin name. Uh, let's play it automatically for now. Ping pong once. You can see the the head is already turning into white one. So we want to go back to the red, like the blue one. So yeah, it's blue. And then let's make it a transparent. Okay, here we go. Our uh, little octopus just go transparent for the head part. Now, uh, instead of play automatically, we actually want to trigger this twin effect with our uh, recasting event. So let's copy this twin name and go back to our behavior script. So here we want to add our target object here. And the twin name is ping pong color. So once I add that and I click on the head, so I click again. You can see we can making the little octopus go transparent. So this is another super inter uh, super simple interaction that you can just add to any kind of physics object. Cool. And this is it for all the four different octopus. And another thing I want to show you, like it's real like magical to me as this new feature release is the world mesh. So as we all know, like uh, Lens Studio can actually scan the world and creating this nice uh, world mesh. And with this thing, you can also simply add a physics collider here and change it to mesh collider and just drag our world mesh here. And let's also uh, show collider here. So now the world is actually having all those collider. And what this means is that our little like Sapphire's octopus can collide with the world. Let's just enable this one and also the second one here. Uh, the third one, I think, is say body. So, oh, let's also add the gravity back so you can see the balls are like running around in the air. Here. Okay, everything is falling on the floor. See uh, the octopus and also the sphere. They have this little nice bounce effect against the floor. So this is the interactive uh, like uh, room you have. But if you push your lens to your device, you can also scan your room. So uh, the octopus can fall onto your table, chair, even the floor. So it's pretty fun. Uh, but let's see, we want to make a bunch of octopus instead of sphere because spheres are boring i just like my octopus uh let's just drag it here so now we can see bunch of spheres here uh octopus here and let's just remove this constraint and to save some performance here and uh disable the here script so now it's just a body right here so we can see some octopus in the in your room already and what if we want to make like this is not enough i want to have more so here for this script instead of on awake we can actually change it to tap so now it's only one uh, octopus but if i tap and tap again we can see a bunch of octopus here and it's taking over the world and we can Oh, now it's just too many. Uh, with the live streaming and everything, since one runs slow in the lens studio, but if like I close this live stream, it can run super smooth with all those octopus. Yeah, so you can drag them around and then uh, put it everywhere using the draggable. For example, I can put it here. Yeah, it has this ni nice, ni nice collision effect. You know, put it on the table like here. So it has a different kind of interactions that you can make a simple uh, 
collision effect or like for example if i click uh, i collide with the uh, the table and then do something make the octopus bigger you know all those kind of stuff so it's pretty fun to play with the world match okay let's disable that another thing i want to show you is the image tracker so for example if i want to attach the little octopus on the image tracker tracker Let's just find a uh, image tracking here. And let's find uh, the image where we also have here in the interactive panel. So it's the marker here. Yeah, this is the one I just added. And like for uh, almost everyone, like you want once before, if you want to have some a digital object on top of the image tracker, you just drag it, uh, the object in front of the image tracker, right? So like this, let's just reset transform. You can see, oh, let's add our constraint back. So it's constrained to the uh, image tracker. The little, where is our little octopus? Oh, now it's gone. Screen. Let's just disable it for now and re-enable it to see. Maybe it's too big. Within the project. Oh. It's gonna take a while because we have too many octopus here in the project. Have, do we have any other questions in the channel in the chat, Oscar? Mm. This is gonna take a little while. We actually just got one, so right timing. Okay. Uh, if we want to start uh, a filter with transparent objects not visible and only make them appear after an interaction, what is the best practice? Using behavior script to disable them on a way. For example, uh, I don't think it's necessarily related to physics, but maybe you can still reply if you're <laughs> familiar with that issue. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely like you can uh, using again using the twin effect. So for example, you can make the, the little octopus here. Let's just reset it. I think it should be on the start location. Yeah, here. So you can actually modify the material into like uh, transparent, like the material here. So we have a starting material, right? You can actually make it a transparent from the beginning. And uh, using behavior script, if you tap on that, you can then make it uh, appear again. So it's just doing it opposite. Okay, let's move it back and put it under the image tracker. And the reset transform. Um, yes. We so, have another question, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, from Go ahead. Uh, Urban Pokemon, uh, Elisa. What if instead of a screen touch, we want to use 3D hand uh, interaction to send a raycast based on a hand gesture detection? 
to get the position data of the quote gesture style. Mm -hmm. Like, for yeah, example, I... like sealing a 3D object to get attached to the user's hand when it figure like grab. Yeah, so definitely like in the asset lab way, so we are actually jumping way ahead. So we definitely have the uh, 3D hand tracking later. So we do have this uh, hand physics asset in the asset lab way. If we import that, you can get a bunch of like, uh, like bone data, like the 3D hand tracking data. And then you can use like uh, two joints at casting array. So it's like from uh, this joint and uh, in, uh, index joint zero and three and casting array and then point into a different physics object and then using that as input instead of like uh, the uh, camera or touch screen uh, trigger this recasting. So you can definitely do that. Uh, we don't have time to cover too many uh, 3D gestures here today, but the way uh, feel free to go to uh, see the 3D hand tracking uh, YouTube video and also like 3D hand tracking uh, template where you can track how to making all those gestures and then with those like stuff and putting a ray cast to different object and then trigger different kind of event. So that's definitely doable. Yeah. So here, uh, I just remember why. So like we have this like constraint, right? So we actually want to constrain to our image tracker instead of like uh, the specific position in the world. So here we want to have a physics collider. Let's make it into a box and then show collider and make it uh, in intangible like this. And then we want to uh, track our constraint object uh, to the image tracker like this. So now we can see the little octopus is actually in front of this uh, image tracker. But actually, we don't want to do that because for the physics simulation, uh, it's actually transform the world uh, position. So if you uh, track that into an image tracking, so when you move it around, actually mess up with the physics simulation. So we don't really want to do this. Instead, we actually want to have a uh, script here to bend the transform and bend the, uh, the target from the beginning. So for example, here we have the image tracker and we want to add an anchor here. Let's have a scene object as a child. Disable the octopus so we can see the image tracker here in our screen. So this will be the pivot point and we want to make it a little bit higher. Uh, like here. Yeah, so we can we'll attach our octopus here in front of the image tracker. And we want to attach the script to our octopus. I'm going to write some simple code to show you how to write uh, bind our uh, octopus to it. So we do want to get uh, the bind point, the, uh, the bind scene object, which will be our little octopus object. And here we also have like input for the scene object where. Is, will be the pivot point. And we also want to grab the constraint so we can attach the target to it. Input. And the last one, it will be the uh, collider, will be the uh, image tracker collider. Target collider. Okay, so those will be our input for the script. And then we're going to attach the bind point, bind object, which will be our little octopus and our pivot point, the little constraint here from the octopus, and also the target collider on the uh, image tracker. Okay, cool. 
So、uh, let's write a simple function called bind. We want to apply get our、uh, pivot point point toward transformation. Uh, let's grab that from the object. Point、uh, get transform and then get a word transform. And then we want to apply the pivot point transform to our little octopus, which will be prepped. Find object dot get transform in the set transform. Um, our pivot toward transform. In this way, we are going to set the transform for our octopus and attach, like, put it where the pivot point will be. And then we also need to、uh, add a constraint target. The target will, which will be the、uh, image tracking. And don't forget to remember.、Uh, don't forget to constraint re-anchor target. So in this way. In this way, we can then、uh, attach our、uh, little octopus to where the anchor should be. And the anchor,、uh, since we're attaching the scale, so we should also make the scale a little bit smaller. Here. See here we have our bind object, and I forget to call the function bind.、Oh, here we go. We have our little octopus attached in front of image maker marker, and at the same time I have the marker here on my phone too. If I open the camera, we can see. We can attach our little octopus to our phone too, right? So, like with this, you can actually bind, you know, any digital objects to your image tracker and uh, uh, apply an image on your phone and then attach that to your phone. Those kind of stuff is pretty interesting and fun. Okay, that's pretty much enough for all the image and the world tracking. And if I want to use octopus as like little earring. On my hat. Let's do that. So we do want to have a hat mesh, so it can track my hat. Switch to a person here, and for a hat mesh, we can similar thing. We add just a、uh, physics collider, and then apply our face mesh to it. Let's just show collider. So now you can see the、uh, mesh is、uh, aligned to the head mesh. Let's put a simple occluder to the face. So if the octopus is behind our face, we can also see that. We can block the octopus、uh, from our face. And also, let's disable the show collider. So instead of bind、uh, into our image tracker, we can add a. Pivot point here to our head. So we do want to adjust position here. Let's put it here near where your ear are, and then here our octopus. Let's adjust the input model for this. So instead of binding to the、uh, image tracker, we want to add to our head. 
and we do also want to change the pivot point here uh, also the pivot point is too big for our gear ring so let's change it to something smaller So now you can say it's actually attached to the user's head. So if I just move around, it's still attached to my hair and you can definitely uh, adjust pivot point to move it like closer to where your head are. See, now it's like here. So those are the simple effects that you can do with your head and uh, try to bind constraint physics objects to different points similar to this and uh yeah so someone mentioned the head interaction uh, the hand interaction so i'm going to uh go to the uh asset library and find the hand physics And drag it under the main camera. Now we can see the hand collider here, left and right hand. And there are also like example, uh, simple examples where you can uh, play with this little uh, square as uh, a rectangle here. Let's just disable the examples here. So we do want to interact hand with our little octopus. Here you can, you know, touch it around and move it around with the collision effect. And for example, like you want to cast a ray from your joint. So with this latest physics features, we have two different kinds of data. One is the, the collider data. The other one is hand tracking data where you can get all the joints and the bones from this hand tracking script. Let's open it. This is awesome. This is awesome. I'm very, it's really cool. Actually, we someone just said that's so cute. I think kids are going to love it, but just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. like here uh, with the hand tracking, you can get all the joint point you know uh where the transform the joint is like in the world so for example you can get like the index as i mentioned the index zero and index three and then calculate a ray cost and uh actually we do have something here like get ray you know like from certain point from the finger so we do have that if you can get a ray from a certain finger then you can cast a ray cast and then uh, using the uh, ray casting uh, script, I think you can find it here. This is how you're gonna do a ray cast. So instead of like starting point and end point, you can get like finger point as a starting and end point that cast a ray. Whenever it hits any digital object, it can trigger some effect. So I won't cover that thing here because it's going to be super long and uh, I think we can leave that as a homework and like try to do that by yourself. And if you don't know how to do that, you know, feel free to ask a question in our form and uh, finding, I think you can definitely find something in the uh, 3D hand tra tracking template and it has like, you can actually grab, you know, this little octopus and then move it around add an additional constraint to the to the octopus, those kind of stuff. Uh, you can definitely do that. Okay, so now we have the hand tracking here. And uh, beside hand tracking, we also have the full body tracking, as I mentioned. Let's find that full body tracking. It's right here. Also move this under the main camera. Okay. Let's switch to a full body preview.
we can see a bunch of heart around the body, right? So like, yeah, definitely you can、uh, change the heart from the heart to the octopus. So let's see how can we do that. So here we have a, like generate heart. So instead of that, we do want to put our octopus here. This is going to be our spawn object. So now we have we can have like a bunch of giant octopus here. And now it has constraint attached to that, so that's why it's not falling onto the floor. My God, this is running crazy right now. Okay, here we go. Now we have the octopus and it's falling onto the floor. Yeah, and you can definitely change、uh, the size of it. Again, it's too big. Gonna pause it for now.、Uh. Right again. So here we go. We have our little cute octopus、uh, spawning around the body. So those are the things that you can do, like. You can see it's like falling down onto the floor. So we also have a floor calculation around the body, and of course you can imagine putting a body into an environment having you know the world mesh tracking and the full body tracking, and making the octopus spawn everywhere, and make your own like little、uh, 3D model spawn everywhere. Yeah, so that's like everything about this demo.、Uh, yeah, like is there any other questions, Oscar? Thank you, thank you, Yao.、Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, I'm uh, yeah. There's no question at the moment.、Uh, anyone, if you have any question, please、uh, drop them below.、Um, there is, I think, a couple seconds、uh, between our recording and the, what people are seeing. So I'm gonna <laughs> let's see. Let's wait a bit. But uh, yeah, uh, da, 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 da. yeah. Sorry.、Uh, okay, there's a question. Uh, sorry, I didn't get how Yao added our beloved octopus as a script to make it rain on body. You mind、make、showing that again? To make it rain?、Uh, how did you? What? <laughs> how did you add it? How did you add the octopus as a script to make it rain、uh, on the body? On the body, so like attach the head or like a spawn around the body part, like this one. Let me check. I think it's probably the the spawn, you, the spawn.、Uh, how do you trigger the spawn? I guess the script is if it's a script that you be, you're using for that. Yes, there is like a spawn object script attached to this、uh, full body、uh, physics collider. So this is a spawn object、uh, where it can spawn a bunch of octopus around you. So here you can just、uh, instead of like、uh, so originally we have this heart、uh, object where you can spawn it. And now we just change it the spawn object, object from the heart to octopus. So now you can see the octopus spawning around the body instead of the heart. But if we go back to the heart, we can also have our heart back. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you. Looks cute. You always always show cute animation.、Uh, next one、uh, from Danny. Yeah, he's asking for the physics. My question is: When you create a lens, the blue or red line will not appear in the final result. All right.、Uh, I, that's pretty obvious to me, but can you confirm?、Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Can you re repeat the question? Sorry, sorry for the physics.、Uh, the question、mm -hmm. is:、uh, when you create a lens,、uh, the blue and red lines we see, you know, representing、uh, the physics body, the collider,、uh, uh -huh. they will, yeah, the colliders,、uh, will they appear in the final、uh, result? I would guess, obviously, no. But just in case, I, I think if you show enable collider, so you can also see that in the you know in the in the neural lens, you can actually say those say those things as like a debug mode. For example, especially when you scan the world mesh, it's really hard to see whether you get the the part or not, right? So like sometimes you do want to the debug mode in your lens, but as as I mentioned, you can just simply disable that and to hide that from your final、uh, lens. And you can also show that push your to your device and to see the debug mode, so you can do the comparison. 
Awesome. Thank you. I think that's our last questions. I'm just uh, uh, waiting a bit. But meanwhile, so if you've been joining uh, during the live stream, as a reminder, this is part of uh, the workshop session we're running for the Lensathon uh, that is happening right now with $200,000 of prizes. It's going to be 30 winners. Uh, you can uh, sign up and submit your uh, lenses on the link that you see uh, right here. And that is going to be in the description as well. Uh, we're very excited to see what you come up with. And especially with great tips uh, like Yao shared, I think uh, it should be really exciting. Uh, and maybe we'll, I, I'm guessing, Yao, we're going to see some projects with octopuses. Uh, <laughs> I think you, you, you probably created the trend. Uh, I know we are very creative folks uh, today so there's a there's uh, someone uh, yara say thanks a lot have a nice weekend so yeah i think we're done uh there's no more questions thank you everyone for joining and and yao uh you want to say bye to everyone as well <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for joining and i know we're super close to the deadline for last so but please you know just send me your project add some physics and some advanced techniques love to see your lens like in your lens so yeah cool right, nice to see, meet everyone thank you bye bye Bye. Thank you, bye bye.